I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Miller, could you please call the roll? Chairman DeMaria. Here. Vice Chairman Albrecht. Here. Mr. Bushnell. Mrs. Kiefer. Here. Mrs. Purdy. Here. Mrs. Sebesky. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Ms. Torres. Ms. Maddock. Uh, Dr. Uh, McGorrick, are there additions or deletions to the minute to the agenda? I'm trying to go fast. Um, yes, we have a personnel addendum and the school board minutes to be added to the consent agenda. Thank you. And there are no spotlights tonight. Um, I'd like everybody to know that there is technical difficulty. My brother here is trying to do his best to fix it. Um, we may have l limited recording, no recording, short time recording. So what we're going to try and... Are you excited about that? So we're going to try and make this as quick as we can. You okay? I need to know if I can use myself. You um, so, and if the board can please limit your comments as short as you can so that we can get through and get as much of our presentations on camera or tape as we possibly can, we'd appreciate that very much. Um, and board committee reports. Mr. Williams, board anything? Board. Ms. Sebesky, policy? Mr. Chair, the policy committee met prior to this meeting. Um, there will be um, board policies coming for the meeting review in July. Um, please, once you get them, let me know if you have any questions prior to that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Albright, anything for education support? Uh, just for the good of the board, uh, the chair, the mayor, and I toured New Baldwin last week, and I have to say it's incredibly impressive, and if it's not intimidating enough, um, walking through and looking at Old Town, boy, the view from the roof is spectacular. He doesn't do Facebook. Pay attention to my Facebook page. I'll be putting some pictures up. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bushnell is not here, so you don't have anything for fun. No, sir. Board member comments. Ms. Kiefer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to begin by um, first turning to uh, my colleague, Mrs. Purdy, and saying thank you so much for your service to the city. I know this is your last board meeting with us, but I know we'll still see you around, um, so thank you. Um, and I just wanted people to appreciate that we have the 4th of July coming up to celebrate our freedom. And for us, that means, um, you know, really be happy for the independence we have and just um, appreciate every moment, every day, each other, um, as well as the difference that we can make together. We're not a perfect country, but let's work together. Um, and school starts in 61 days, so. <laughs> Okay, now that everybody hates you. <laughs> okay. um, so one of the things that I, I, I did want to close out with is um, I wanted to pass on something that has, has pretty much kind of threaded throughout um, just about everything I do. And it was some wisdom that was passed on to me probably about 20 some years ago when I was first starting out as a career person. And um, this gentleman said, the best thing I can tell you is when you stop listening, you stop learning. And when you stop learning, you stop being effective. So since this is my last televised um, school board uh, member comment uh, opportunity, I have one last meeting tomorrow, but it's not on camera. Um, I want to make sure everyone's aware that I have listened. I have listened to a lot of parents and teachers and students. I've learned a lot. I've listened to everybody sitting up here, um, learned a lot gained an awful lot of wisdom. Every single person sitting up here has resulted in me learning something incredibly valuable. And so I'm glad I've listened, because I'm pretty sure that no matter what my future endeavors hold, um, I'm going to be a lot more effective because of that listening. So I do want to thank the city of Manassas students, the parents, and the teachers, and, and the voters for giving me the opportunity and the trust to um, serve. And so because we are short, I will close this with one of my absolute most favorite quotes. I think it's kind of appropriate since it is public education, because it's Dr. Seuss. My kids grew up with Dr. Seuss. I grew up with Dr. Seuss. And one of the things I think that was really great about one of the things he said, which I want to leave with you, is better to know how to learn than to know. So thank you and farewell. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams. Thank you. I'll be brief. Um, congratulations on 
your service to us. I appreciate everything you've done um, to help the city of Manassas, and I wish you well in your future endeavors, Ms. Purdy. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. Sebesky. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will say as well, thank you, Mrs. Purdy, for your service, especially with myself on the policy committee. And I'm sure that uh, you enjoy having more free time. And uh, I know that this city appreciates as well all that you've done. Um, I want to recognize and thank the Special Education Advisory um, Council who's here tonight. They're going to be presenting to us. I serve on that as our school board representative, and they're a great group of people, and I'm looking forward to hearing from them, and they're all, a lot of them are here, so thank you for taking your time to serve on that uh, board and allow um, special education to be the great service that we offer here in the city. You help contribute to that every day. I also want to thank the schools, Safe Schools Advisory Council, which I also serve on as a school, as a school board representative. Um, they're here tonight to present as well, and they have some great things to tell us. It's a committee that has met monthly and done a lot of uh, listening, and I think have some great recommendations to come to us because of their great questions and much listening that they've done. So thank you to those that are here tonight to support the person presenting, as well as all those that might be watching that have spent many hours over the last 18 months serving on this committee to allow us to have the recommendations um, which are very important to our service. And I want to congratulate all the kids that they're now on summer break and to have a good time while they can because apparently, according to Ms. Kiefer, you only have 60 days. So. 61. 61. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, Mr. Albright. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, brevity seems to be the word of the day, and I, just a sincere thank you to our colleague at the end, Mrs. Purdy. Uh, I think you're... Her ending public comments about listening are very true, and I only hope that I've done half as good a job as she has over the past four years. So thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> thank you, Mrs. Purdy, for your service. Thank you, everybody, for being quick tonight. Um, we'll see everybody on the 4th of July, one of the two best days to be in Old Town Manassas. So uh, that and the Christmas parade, we'll see you there. Uh, citizens' comments. I have no one signed up. Does anyone like to speak? We are rolling. I hope we're rolling, figuratively. And uh, going on to discussion, uh, do I not have a consent. consent agenda? Right there it is. Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I move the school board of the city of Manassas, Manassas, pardon me, adopt the consent agenda as modified. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky to adopt the consent agenda as modified. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries 6-0. Discussion agenda. Student Achievement and Accountability Special Ed Advisory Committee Annual Report. Use the mouse, is that right? The Check with Lee on that oh, one. Go ahead. Okay. We just sit here and look good. Page down on the keyboard. Oh, I see it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> if you need help, just let me know. All right. Uh, good evening, members of the school board, Dr. McGorick, Nassau City Public School staff, and members of the community. I am here this evening to bring you your annual report. Uh, my name is Dorothy Atkins, and I'm the chairman of the Special Ed Advisory Committee for the special uh, for Manassas City Public Schools. The SEAC is the committee made up of members of the community, parents, and teachers, and students who volunteer their time and energy to identify the special education needs of Manassas City Public Schools. This year, oh, sorry, page two. <laughs> this year the committee recognized the need for transition services uh, to be provided to parents and students. Transitions from different types, uh, from elementary all the way to the adult life. How does this affect the students, parents, and the teachers? And how can we help the committee, or how can the committee help bring this information to the community regarding transition within the special education setting? This year we sponsored our first ever workshop called Everyone Transitions. The transition workshop had uh, speaker Kristen Kane from PETSI, which is the Parent Education Advisory Training Center. 
She provided information for the students and parents on planning for transitions, what to expect and where to obtain this information. She also allowed for parents and students to answer or ask questions at the end of the workshop. Um, we also partnered with Manassas City Public Schools in order to allow them to benefit from the information being provided. Staff and students were available after the workshop for questions from the parents and the students, what to expect, how it's going to go, so that the students would have student-on-student -student interaction and know what to expect. Materials were provided for all in attendance. We have Kristen Kane, who was uh, heading, who did the workshop for us. The workshop was very successful. The amount of positive feedback from parents and from students was wonderful. Um, the students and parents were provided all the valuable information that they will need to assist them in being successful in the transitions that their children will have from elementary into adult life and where to obtain all that information. In other SEAC news, um, we've added several new members to our committee. So it's very exciting. We have some new um, hard-working members of our committee. Um, the workshop increased involvement in the community and making our presence more known so that we can service more members inside the community. We also are utilizing social media to educate the community, providing um, fact sheets, uh, aware of our upcoming meetings, etc. And finally, I want to thank you to school member Mrs. Sebesky. Um, your guidance, your personal knowledge has been uh, wonderful. I can't thank you enough. And to Dr. Stone, without her, none of this would have been possible at all. And also, lastly, to my wonderful, dedicated, hardworking SEAC committee. Uh, it's a hardworking group of people volunteering their time every you know, once a month for us to get this going. And we look forward to a successful 16-17 school year. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hang on one second? Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I've got to ask him whether anybody wants to, you know, question you. Sure. Uh, first of all, <laughs> I want to thank you for all your hard work. And everybody, these are some of our most, obviously, our most special kids. And the work that you guys do is, is very important. And we appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions or comments? Do you have something? Good. Believe it or not. Real quick, it just thank you. It was a great presentation. It's a great committee. I enjoy being able to work with everybody. Um, so uh, thank you for coming to the poll board and letting them know the great work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Williams? I would say thank you for your work and everyone else in the committee. I mean, this work is special and important to the community and to the students. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now you may go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Safe Schools Advisory Council recommendations. Good evening, members of the school board. First, I want to thank Manassas City Public Schools for giving us the opportunity to participate in the Safe Schools Advisory Committee 2015-2016. It's been an amazing experience to learn about the mental health support that Manassas City Schools and the Network of Community Services provide to our children. Nope. So you just wanted to pay, um, hold on, got it? There you go. Our objective from the beginning has been to identify areas of concern and develop recommendations to address these needs. There's a lot of words on this slide. The council was formed in February 2015 with representatives from the Nassau City Public School Central Office, community resources, and parent representatives from each school in the city. Starting from scratch, council members worked to define our area of focus and quickly realized that most of us did not know what services and support were available to our students. Through the following months, we heard from counselors from every school, school resource officers, community mental health professionals, therapeutic day treatment counselors, internal PBIS facilitators, and others about the work they do every day to support our children. These presentations were eye-opening to say the least. I don't believe that most parents comprehend the needs that exist in every grade level and the care with which our staff and administrators work to, re to address these needs while providing excellent education every day. As you can see, many people gave their time to understand this subject and to have meaningful dialogue about how to enhance the services and support that our schools offer. 
Council recommendations. The council members spent a lot of time listening to professionals who are familiar with the restrictions of staffing and funding that all school divisions face. We made every effort to take this into consideration when making our recommendations. Our first recommendation, in 2005, council members discussed the connection between drug use and mental health. Lieutenant Morbetto reported, reported that, at one time, regular drug sweeps were held at Osborne High School and at Metz Middle School. The council voted to reinstate these activities and the board approved. The first instance in the revived program was held in May 2016 at Osborne High, and we were happy to learn that no drugs were found. The council recommends that these canine sweeps be held on a regular basis going forward. Youth Mental Health First Aid. Youth Mental Health First Aid is designed to teach teachers and school staff how to recognize warning signs and to provide initial help and referrals to a child who is experiencing a mental health challenge or is in crisis. Topics include anxiety, depression, disruptive behavior disorders, and eating disorders, to name a few. There are a small number of staff at MCPS who are currently trained in youth mental health first aid, and the council recommends that all staff who interact with students be trained to recognize the risk factors, signs and symptoms of mental illness, or emotional crisis. This training is available at no cost to all school personnel. Additional training. The council recommends that school personnel be trained to understand when it's appropriate to involve the school resource officers in order to get the best outcome for students. In addition, in May 2016, school personnel completed a needs assessment. The council recommends that school counselors receive professional development opportunities that address their specific <coughs> needs. Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports, PBIS. PBIS practices are founded on the assumption and the belief that all children can exhibit appropriate behavior and that if we intervene before problematic behaviors escalate, the problems are much more manageable. PBIS involves teaching, modeling, practicing, and rewarding appropriate behavior and having clear consequences for inappropriate behaviors. In school year 2015-2016, PBIS was implemented in all Manassas City Public Schools. Because this is the first year PBIS is being used in the division, the focus has been on Tier 1, or school-wide, preventative and proactive level. Schools are in different stages of implementation based on specific school and student needs. The Council recommends that MCPS continue to assess Tier 1 results and expand Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions to the benefit of students in all schools. And finally, there are a number of resources that are available to parents and students. As a parent myself, I wasn't aware of most of them. The Council recommends that MCPS create a page specifically dedicated to, to mental health resources and information, and to invest in technology that makes it easier for parents to find information and assistance when it's needed. In addition, the Council recommends that MCPS create resources to reach parents and students using social media, parent awareness models like the METS ELL Parent Advocate Program, and make an effort to include mental health awareness in health and wellness events. In closing, I want to thank Dr. McGorick and MCPS for giving us this opportunity to contribute to the educational success of all of our children. I have even more respect for the teachers, administrators, community partners, and all those who work so hard to educate and care for thousands of students each day. And I am humbled by the spirit and strength of children who struggle with mental illness, anxiety, learning disabilities, and stressful home and family situations, yet come to school because we hope it's a place where there are people who will try to accept them, understand them, and provide the help they may not be able to get anywhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hauser. We appreciate it very much. Um, and again, we appreciate all the work you all put in, the entire committee. Are there any questions or comments? Quick comment, I guess. Um, thank you, Ms. Hauser, for the presentation. I think it, it really shows how 
this board listens, it was a little over a year ago, the Safe Schools Advisory Committee came to the Ed Support Committee, recommended the K-9 interventions, you know, developing mm -hmm. a plan. Your support that we just heard for PBIS is, I think, really um, reassuring to, I think, those of us on the board, I think staff, we all are convinced it's the right thing to do. It's fantastic to hear the community mm -hmm. and our advisory councils think the same thing. So, again, as the chair said, thank you for all your work. You did a great job. I know you were nervous. Thank you so much. Um, I love this group because it's made up of um, staff, um, parents, and um, community members that support our students across the board. And what better way to get the kind of feedback that we need to make sure that we're making great decisions. Um, so I appreciate all the very hard work since I serve on this committee. I know all the hard work and all the presentations you've sat through to give that to the superintendent so we can have the, the kind of guidance that we know the community would like us to have. So thank you and please thank the committee for, for their hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir. Um, echo the thanks. Thank you all for serving on the committee. Um, mental health is a very important issue which is burgeoning in our society and hopefully you all keep sight of it. and. Um, don't just look at it during certain times. We need to monitor constantly. But mm -hmm. what you've done as a committee is, will be very helpful to us in the community. So thank you very much for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, we're going into the action agenda. Um, student Achievement and Accountability, METS, I can't see, partially accredited. I can't read them. Reconstituted school application. Mr. Lyon. Mr. Chairman DeMaria, members of the board. Uh, this evening, I'm here to introduce uh, Ms. Buckeye uh, as she presents her application to the uh, State Board of Education for uh, partially accredited reconstituted school accreditation. Before she gets up there, I just want to hit on a couple of highlights on how we got to this. Back in 1314, METS was accredited with warning in math. And then in 1415, they became accredited with math, a uh, warning to math and reading. At, after the 1415 school year, we were able to hit the, the benchmark for math and, and be fully, hit the fully uh, accredited benchmark for math, but we continued to pick up uh, reading in 1415. And then this current year, we were accredited, uh, well, partially accredited in previous school for 1516 in reading. Um, so with the changes in accreditation uh, last fall, uh, that brings, a, a part of why we have to apply this year for the partially uh, accredited reconstituted school. Because of all those, those three years of not being fully accredited, the state looks at them uh, as an uh, inclusive number, an aggregated number. So now we're, we'll, my preliminary data right now indicates that METS may not hit the benchmark again for reading. Within five or six points, uh, we're very close. Um, my data is preliminary. I still have tests that are um, still outstanding. Some of my portfolio assessments are still, I uh, have not gotten them back from the state from scoring yet. So this is preliminary data, but we do uh, feel the data does indicate that we will need to apply for partially accredited uh, reconstituted school accreditation in the fall. Um, <coughs> with that, I ask Ms. Buckheit to come up here and present the application. It requires your approval to be submitted to the State Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Good evening, Chairman DeMaria, school board members. Um, I am here tonight, as Mr. Lyon said, to request approval for the METS Middle School's reconstituted school application. Upon your approval, this application will be forwarded to the Virginia Department of Education for consideration. So over the last four years, Gracie METS has made improvements in its instructional and intervention processes, which is demonstrated in the positive trend line for 10 of the standards of learning tested subjects. The most notable gains are in grade eight math, which went from a 12% pass rate in 2011-12 to a current preliminary pass rate of 70%. Grade seven reading has gone from 58% in 2012 and 2013 to the current preliminary pass rate of 75%. Preliminary data indicates we will meet or exceed the requirements for accreditation in social studies, science, and mathematics this year. We do not, however, anticipate meeting the requirement for the area of English, thus the application for consideration as a reconstituted school. 
So this table shows student performance over the course of the last four years in each of the areas tested at Gracie Metz Middle School. The numbers indicated here are preliminary numbers using the federal formula. Preliminary results using the state accreditation formula are listed on page five of the plan that you were forwarded earlier and indicate overall stores for state accreditation of 69% in English, 75% in math, 75% in science, and 84% in history is what we're predicting for this year looking at that data. The process of developing the reconstitution plan began early in May of this year when I met with all staff to review the process prior to SOL testing. As we began to get student testing results in late May, it became a possibility that we would need to complete an application and the process started in early June, meeting with staff regarding potential strategies for next year. <laughs> a draft was created, reviewed with the Mets leadership team and English department before final edits were made with central office staff. We're proposing the following interventions for the 2016-17 school year. Structure changes, including the organization of the student body into four academies with the seventh grade interdisciplinary team and eighth grade interdisciplinary team making an academy. This new structure will allow teachers to have that common group of students that they provide instruction to, allowing for increased student achievement through collaborative planning and the integration of subjects. All staff will increase their knowledge. Actually, go back. Oh, I know. Yeah, we're on this one for a little bit, Lee. I'm sorry. <laughs> All staff will increase their knowledge and use of instructional framework and research based practices, professional development and support in the use of formative assessment information to adjust teaching intervention for students daily will occur. English staff, uh, at partic in particular at grade eight, will engage in activities related to increasing the rigor of learning activities and alignment of assessment to the English standards. The structural changes will also allow for reading and writing to happen across the curriculum. As each subject area has its own unique purpose for reading and writing, thus making authentic use of literacy skills happen within each subject. It's critical that we ensure teachers new to METS each year are provided with professional development related to the school's reading and writing programs. Administrative walkthroughs will help to ensure teachers are provided with supportive feedback throughout the school year. Grade 8 student performance on the writing assessment has been an area of concern for a number of years, thus requiring several intervention steps. All staff will participate, so all staff, all subjects, will participate in monthly professional development to ensure consistent student expectations across all subjects in the area of writing and grammar usage. A grammar resource will be identified and used to start the upcoming school year. Students in grades seven and eight will complete both a writing assessment and a multiple choice grammar assessment quarterly to monitor their progress during that two-year period. The METS RTI committee will evaluate the program currently used for intervention in reading, which is READ 180. The RTI committee will administer universal screenings twice a year to monitor progress of students not meeting the reading requirements and make adjustments to their instructional program as needed. The METS administrative team and literacy coach will spend extensive time this summer examining this year's results to draw conclusions regarding what practices and programs are working and those that may not be. Family engagement strategies will involve increasing communication between parent, student, and teacher with each student creating a reading goal before the fall conference to share with their caregivers. We'll continue to grow our ELL Parent Advocate Program, sponsoring a minimum of two literacy events this fall, with the overall goal of increasing awareness of the importance of reading and writing in the home. And then this table indicates the minimum trajectory of progress we anticipate uh, using those strategies I've just spoken about. I want to thank you for the time to share the plan um, and I'm open for questions and comments, please. Thank you very much. Are there any, do you need to have something, sir? 
No, everybody wants to take questions, yes. Ms. Balk, I mean, it, a lot of data and clearly a plan we have to comply with. And certainly when you read the details and you look at, as you said, what could be perceived as re reasonable inexperience of the staff and reason we're going undergoing in a professional development path, with the, what's, I think it's a 10 point increase in test scores we're looking for in the next two academic years. With the partial reconstitution, what is the ramification if we don't make it? Mm. I might That's defer to Mr. Lyon, that. actually. Right. So you're talking if next year we're right. standing Right. I mean, five here. points next year, five points the year after that, five points the year after that. And right. Uh, it, as a, recon a partially improved reconstituted school, you, get, you have three years. I don't think that's the question uh, okay. asked. They only have to reach 75% to not be to no longer to be fully accredited. So they're five points away, but they have to give a trajectory so that it does so that we're not just working towards 75. That because we reach that 75, we must continue that progress. And so that's the purpose behind the traje so, trajectory. So the true goal is achievable. What is, I look at the tra trajectory and say that's more than a goal. That's a huge stretch. Right. Thank um, you. Right. But it's supposed to be challenging, and that's the expectation of the Department of Education, and it is our expectation as well. And so what our goal is is that METS will be fully accredited at the end of next year. Mm -hmm. And once fully accredited, we're out of this Yes. It's done. process. Ms. Kiefer. Thank you for your presentation tonight. Um, a couple of questions. One is I think it's important for us to make sure that folks understand reconstituted. Um, so if you can just delve a little bit into, you know, what it means. Because, um, yeah, you know, you hear you different. Wanna, if, Lee, if you could go back to that second slide. Um, that the last paragraph, uh, yeah. That one? So, the, yep, the last paragraph really speaks to, um, so actually the definition of reconstitution, uh, m you know, my interpretation of this definition is really the state is giving local control to educational units um, to be able to define what works for your community and to be able to take some actionable steps that, that I think they would be in agreement with are following with best practice, but also speaks to the uniqueness of Manassas City Public Schools. Um, so I think it's I think the state is providing that opportunity for us to do what we feel pretty confident is going to work for our community yeah and I offer that correct me if I'm wrong that's a good thing um, and I just wanted to make sure that in the community sometimes you'll hear it's a state takeover and it's not it is giving that local control so I just wanted that message out there that the plan is specific to what we believe the needs of our community are. Mm -hmm. um, and I just I had one other quick question. Mm -hmm. So um, the f implementation of the plan as outlined that had been given to us, is that the plan is all those things will happen this year, the interdisciplinary teams and everything? Yeah, and, okay. and we were, I mean, as most of you know, the structural changes were already happening and were already set to happen. Um, you know, as we were looking at that data, so when we looked at the writing data, Dr. McGorick and I had had a conversation actually several months ago about some of those areas of weakness that have been evident for a number of years. What are some strategies and things that we need to do as a school? Um, so it's, it's really, I think these would be things that we would be doing anyway, to be very honest, when we look at data and we look at how we continue to improve um, and, and become a great school, uh, we're just putting it on paper. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Lyon, you wanted to add something? Yes, about reconstitution. Mm -hmm. Ms. Buckeye's right. There are four areas, and one, and you didn't have to do all four areas, but there were governance, instruction, programming, staffing, and student population changes. The one that Ms. Buckeye and the team decided on was instructional changes, and that's really the focus of the application. It is not a takeover. It's, it's revamping and re revising how we're doing things instructionally. So I think that the word reconstituted just gives them a chance to talk about how, what would they like to do differently. We're still partially accredited, just like it was last year. The other, the other thing that I think we all need to recognize is that our seventh grade scored 75%. They met it. So it was the eighth grade that struggled with their reading. So as we look at next year and bringing up those seventh graders to eighth grade, 
with their, they've are, they're already more than, they're at 50% right now of reaching their goal. And of course at Mayfield, the sixth grade students were, they're where they need to be as well. So um, we're gonna be there to support them. They've got a plan, they're ready to go, and we're all excited for them. It's gonna mm -hmm. be hard work. I, you know, staff hopefully are resting up in the next maybe 57 days or whatever for them to come back and hit the ground running and be ready to work hard. Thank you very much. I've got one thing. Um, this all looks great, and I'm very proud of the work you're doing. And what grabbed my fancy is the family part of it, dragging the family in with them. Um, it seems to me when the families are involved, everybody does a little bit better. So I, I really like that aspect of this whole thing. Thank you. So I would put the plug then, if for those who are watching, to make sure they're children are reading mm -hmm. and writing this summer. This summer. Lots, lots, right lots. Right now. Go right grab now. a book. Go <laughs> grab a magazine. And I'm reading every night now. Thank you. Just for you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you all very much. Uh, contract award and presentation, Mr. Hawkins. Oh, Good evening. Wait, one second, sir. Oh, I have to take a vote. Yeah, I think Here. we've got a motion on this. Yes. You can you can stand right there though. You look good. I don't think you have a motion yet. Would you like one? I would like one. Mr. Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the partially accredited reconstituted school application to the Gracie Metz Middle School as presented. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky. Is there any discussion? I have a motion. <clears throat> Again, by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Besky, the school board of the city of Manassas approved the partially accredited reconstituted school application for Metz Middle School as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry 6 0. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Miller. That's what we've got her down there on the end for, keeping us straight. Mr. Hawkins, how about something on uh, contract award and presentations? All right. Good evening. On May 26th of uh, last year, the school board approved the installation of a stop arm enforcement camera system for all MCPS school buses. Since that time, uh, Manassas, the Manassas City Council has adopted the required ordinance, and I think that's uh, in your packet. And then the 2016 General Assembly made additional changes to the state law to allow for citations to be mailed instead of hand delivered by law enforcement personnel. Now that that has been completed, we have issued an RFP or request for proposal to all vendors in this field. We received proposals from these vendors and, and a committee comprised of both the police department and uh, MCPS personnel interviewed the leading candidates to determine which firm would best serve our community. Based on this interview, it was unanimous view of the committee members that Force Multiplier Solutions is the vendor that best serves our students. Some of the attributes of their proposal are as follows. They're going to install a camera system on 100% of our fleet. Not a partial, but 100% of our fleet. Um, we'll have system fully implemented no later than the first day of school, which is August 27th. Um, we'll have full engagement program with the police, courts, the treasurer, and the community. They're going to install multiple interior cameras on all school buses. They will install panic buttons on all buses to notify the transportation department in case of an emergency situation. There will be live, when I say live, I mean real time, video and voice feed of all equipped buses so that an emergency can be assessed and direction given until assistance arrives at the scene. There will be real-time GPS so that the location of all school buses is known at all times. So tonight, to give, uh, we have a representative from uh, Forest Multiplier Solutions. His name is Mr. Rob Knox. He's the Eastern Regional President, and uh, he'll be giving a short presentation to you. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Knox. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Superintendent. Um, I'm really delighted to be here to represent Force Multiplier Solutions tonight and tell you a little bit more about the details of how our bus guard safety system delivers to you what, what you're really looking for. All right. We're all aware of the problems that students face in transportation to and from school these days. 
uh, and also the problems that the transportation managers within the school districts face. I've listed some here. Uh, I can go through them, but, but we're all familiar with them. I think uh, the one that we're here talking most about right now and the purpose of putting stop arms on buses is the this, is this striking of students by motorists passing the bus when the bus is stopped with the stop arm deployed and uh, the law requiring the vehicles to stop. You know, the National Association of State Directors of Pupil Transportation in 2015 found that 80,000 incidents of violations of people passing school buses when the stop arm was extended occurred on one day. Uh, they do this test annually. And in that test, only 26 states participated an estimated 21% of the number of buses and drivers that are actually on the road each day. Uh, extrapolated, that's about 13 to, excuse me, 14 million passes a day, illegal passes of school buses endangering the lives of students. Our bus guard system assists school leaders and police in mitigating these risks. Now, our overarching approach is very simple. We have two goals. The first goal is to enhance the safety of students here in Manassas City by installing our bus guard systems and making them work. And the second goal is to encourage uh, motorist behavior changes so that people start respecting the bus, as we say. Um, we have experience in this, and, and, and we do it through a couple of different approaches. The first, as, as was mentioned by Mr. Hawkins, is that we <clears throat> like to install on 100% of the bus fleet. Other companies would prefer to do 10 to 20%. In our minds, 10 out of 10 students should have the benefit of safety, not 2 out of 10. And additionally, we really have found that deterrence is achieved when you go uh, with 100% installation. And I'll show that some statistics to prove that here in just a moment to you. company's a little different than many. We're, we're only in the school bus safety business. We're not um, involved in uh, speed camera or uh, stop stoplight camera businesses. We're focused entirely on trying to provide solutions to enhance the safety of students riding school buses throughout the country. We do that through a number of ways. Our company didn't start the way you see it today, all of these innovative uh, techniques and, and uh, and, and tools that we have that we'll install on your buses were not present in the beginning of our company. Uh, what we did was we listened to people in the community. We listened to <coughs> students, we listened to parents, we listened to teachers, and for sure we listened to bus drivers. And we understood what kinds of things would, would, would enhance the safety experience and, and pr provide better outcomes. We've been in evolution ever since the beginning. We're innovative, and uh, some of the features that I'll present to you in just a moment will demonstrate that innovation. We created this industry. Stop arm cameras weren't here before force multiplier solutions. Granted, our company name was a different title at the time, but um, the company owner had decided that children were at risk and wanted to find ways to put cameras on the interior buses, only to realize that school districts usually didn't have the funding to, to pay for that, uh, and came up with the idea of using revenue from violators uh, citations as a means of funding these necessary and essential safety tools for schools. It was a very innovative idea. And the results are clear. In 2013, in Dallas County Schools, Texas, Dallas, Texas, we have a 100% uh, fleet installation on 1,700 buses. In 2013 to 14, there was a 22% reduction in the incidence of violations. And then again, in, in the following year, 14-15, uh, we had an additional 16% reduction in violation. So over two years, our full fleet installation resulted in a 38% increase in the safety of students getting on and getting off buses in the Dallas County School area. Our approach is to partner. We'd like to partner with the communities we work with. We want to be uh, working with the schools. We want to be working with the community. We want to be working with the police department uh, to make sure that we're doing everything we can each day to make these systems work the way they need to to protect the kids. So it begins with community awareness. 
our company isn't really about going out and installing the equipment, catching people immediately, sending citations. Of course, it's a police decision on whether citations ever are sent. But we believe community awareness helps a lot of citizens who drive these roads understand the law. For many, it's been a long time since they took driver education, and they might not recall uh, with clarity what the rules are. And, and granted, certain intersections present even more challenge because depending on the type of median, you may or may not realize you have to stop. And we'd like to get that information out so that by the time we're really working um, with the police on this matter, we're, we're addressing people who are truly uh, passing school buses with disregard for the safety of children. We'll work with the city on that. We'll work with them on the message. We have a lot of experience in putting together public awareness materials, and we think we can adapt those very easily to Manassas City. But I want to emphasize this is a Manassas City program, and we will do what it takes to meet the needs of the city and the, the communication style that's necessary to uh, connect with, your, with your, your population. I'll go over this quickly, but Mr. Hawkins actually mentioned uh, many of the features here that I think are unique and very beneficial for our safety solution. Included in a bus guard load, which would be uh, included on every single bus of your 60 bus fleet, we first start with the traffic manager, and it's an exterior camera box. It, it contains seven cameras that's mounted behind the stop arm on the driver's side outside the bus. It takes images, uh, digital images, of vehicles past the bus when the stop arm is deployed. And, and then those images are refined through a processing uh, effort and, and released to the police to decide whether a violation has occurred. The company in no way ever initiates violations. We have interior cameras, which is unusual, but that's where we began and that's what we really believe in. So these interior cameras help a lot with, with uh, anti-bullying initiatives and, and clarifying incidents when they occur, helping both students and drivers in instances where one or the other is accused of something. I, I could give you story after story about that um, where it's been very helpful. But you know, back to the bullying for a minute. I, it's very disappointing to know that in America, 77% of students uh, say that they have been, in one way or another, affected by bullying while at school. And school really starts at the school bus. It's the first part of the day that gets people thinking about uh, whether they're in a good or a bad learning environment. So we think our, our systems will help in uh, creating the deterrent necessary uh, and stopping those kids who are prone towards bullying. Another Unfortunate statistic is of those 77% of bullied children, only 58% would ever tell an adult that it happened to them. We use a rear-facing camera that's positioned outside on the exterior of the bus in the rear to observe people following the bus and assist, frankly, in fact-finding when there's a collision. Uh, it happens with great frequency, we find, through the rear buses. Uh, and all of these cameras report to a bus guard brain, as we call it, but just think of it as a computer, a CPU, and a DVR that's installed and continually records. Uh, they're all designed to be operated in a rugged environment. They are designed to not be uh, obtrusive or in any way um, harm uh, a passenger or rider of the bus. The images are transmitted uh, from the bus over 4G LTE, uh, our modem, uh, using cellular network, and that's just of the violation video when we have a reason to believe that there's a violation that occurred and we want to refer that, in, that information to the police department for citation decision making. There are three other parts, the panic alarm, direct driver link, and live view I'll tell you about in just a moment. Um, but, but, but I think what's really important is this. None of this matters at all if the system doesn't work, and we get asked often and appropriately, well, how, you know, Schools have bought cameras and put them on buses for a long time on the inside, but, but then something happens and they go and pull the hard drive and can't find any evidence of the incident that they were hoping to find out about. What you see here is our health check screenshot, and this, this screenshot tells us, think of each line as a bus and those uh, green dots on each line as a component within the bus guard system on that bus. Right now all systems are go, but if one of those greens were red, then we would know that a particular bus number with a particular item, camera, DVR, uh, it has failed. And we would send our uh, local uh, maintenance team out to immediately hot swap that piece of equipment to get you back up and running. And we do that when the routes, 
we work with the directors of transportation very closely so that we know when the buses are in and out and when we can get there at least obtrusively without disrupting any of the routes to make that change. Most importantly, we keep it up and running. As I said, it wouldn't be worth anything if we didn't, right? The panic alarm is very unique. Um, it affords a driver a very discreet way to notify the school that there's a problem or an incident on the bus that requires attention. The driver can hit this little button that's uh, located right by their driver's seat, and uh, within seconds, the school district will be notified wherever you decide to set up your operations center, you might say, and can take a look at the bus. First of all, the panic alarm will do a few things. It'll send a text or an email, which is what you see there, uh, or both, to whomever you designated as, a, as an official to receive it. And when it's received, it'll tell you the bus number and that the panic alarm was activated. It'll also, those photographs you see, are, are pictures, still pictures that are of the interior of the bus. So it shows you what's happening at the moment that the alarm was, was activated and invites you to do two things. Uh, get on the voice over IP communication system to have two-way dr driver direct link communication with the driver, ask questions, get answers about what's happening. And secondly, uh, actually get a live view, as we call it, but to get a, a streaming vid video feed through the interior cameras to see what's happening, which is very unusual and gives uh, school and police officials alike uh, a real edge in any sort of incident that may happen uh, on a school bus. We'll, uh, we, we will provide reports of a variety of types. I was talking to Mr. Hawkins before the meeting, and he was thinking he'd have to do some reports, and I said, no, we'll, we have all sorts. Here's a sample that just shows you an overview in, a, in an area we've been doing some work uh, where we break down the reports, and what I wanted to show is this is a violation report, and, and it breaks them out by month, by, uh, by, uh, by day of the week, by hours of the day, and this kind of data, when it's really sliced and diced like this, can be very beneficial to the police department in understanding where they might want to increase patrols, uh, understanding where their real problem areas in the community might be, and what kinds of steps help them plan the types of steps that they could take to mitigate that risk. We have committed to loading the 60 buses before the beginning of, this, of the 16-17 school year. I believe that's August 27th or 8th. It is, I don't mind telling you, a very aggressive schedule, but you know, it's uh, one that I, I'd like to have that problem. Um, we, we are already thinking about how to supply that. That's the biggest issue, is just getting all of the units up here in time. But we do believe we can accomplish that, and we are committed to 100% installation. Needless to say, the sooner we can be awarded the contract, then the sooner we can do all the things that have to be done logistically to get started. This timeline depicts the various steps within that period of time and, and uh, you know, the workload and, and the breakout as to how we would accomplish it in phases. You can, I, it's small, I'm sure, for the audience to look at, but you can see it closer on the screen. Just to reiterate, we are the first company to develop stop arm technology. We were the first to issue a, uh, well, rather, to support the police in issuing a citation from stop arm technology. Uh, we are not a litigious company. We've never been sued. We don't sue. It's not the company owner's position. We always load 100% of the fleet. We believe 10 out of 10 children should be safe, not 2 out of 10. And uh, we are the largest, most experienced company in the stop arm business, and I, I sincerely appreciate the city of Manassas' trust in force multiplier solutions in being able to bring a safety solution to Manassas City Public Schools. Thank you, sir. One, uh, one last point, Mr. Chairman. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes. It's all free. It's all violator funded. There's not a dime that comes out of your city um, monies. Thank you. That was an important point. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you know, I, we always tell people, but you, you'd be surprised how hard it is to give away free things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, I move to the school board of the city of Manassas approve the recommendation to award false force multiplier solutions, Inc., or FXX for the stop arm camera and enforcement system. Second. Is there any discussion? Sir. Yes, sir. Um, let me thank a lot of people, starting with the Safe Secure, Secure Advisory Committee, because a year plus ago, a year and a half ago, we actually started looking at some of this with some initial laws that the General Assembly passed. Um, and we did a lot of work. And sometimes 
a delay is a good thing. And in this case, I think it is. We've been able to, one, the General Assembly's changed the law to make it very much more explicit with respect to how things happen. There was a lot of ambiguity previously, which is why we did not go forward. Um, and we've been able to partner with a company in our revised solicitation that they're not a technology company who happens to do some stuff and it's got some revenue positive things. We're talking about a safety company who happens to leverage technology and their, their focus is education. Um, this is first and foremost about having a more safe environment for all of our students. Um, just in some of the prototypes we ran a year plus ago, maybe last February or March, the number of violations in the city was appalling. Um, and I think a lot of it is just, to I think to the gentleman's point, a lot of it is awareness. But here's an example where we can do something. And the value add features that come with this solution with respect to um, the panic button, the, the, the cameras inside the school bus, the other kind of specific things. Um, I'm, I really thank staff for all the work and the revisions <coughs> to the solicitation and going out to industry because I think we've come up with a far better solution. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Besky. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your presentation. I just want to make a, a comment. Um, this board safety is a big concern. It's something that we have um, made many advances I think on in the last four years uh, uh, everything from background checks on all staff for every three years something that only this board does I believe in the whole state because that what keeps our school community safe um, as well as our rapture system that has you know looks for um, sex offenders or other things as people are coming and going out of our buildings to me this is just the next step it's even better that it doesn't physically cost us any money that makes it even better uh, so thank you for um, what you do and I'm looking forward to our community becoming even safer especially our school community our bus drivers our students um, because of the opportunity to have this thank you Ms. Purdy yes, I have quite a few questions and you may or may not be able to, to answer them um, number one you, you gave us statistics associated with um, reductions in violations mm -hmm. and one of the things that I really really worry about is we talk about this is going to prevent students from from you know being harmed I'm and sorry from being harmed okay now you emphasize safety Let's see that. And, and I agree it has a deterrent effect That's what it but is. a camera will only record it cannot stop so what, how many kids a year are, are killed by cars that have failed to stop at a school bus? I didn't bring that statistic with me. I, I have known how many are hit, how many are, are, okay. are killed, casualties of it. It's, uh, there's an astounding number of near misses and many hits. But um, cameras, cameras do record, and recording is a deterrence. Mm -hmm. And for those people who aren't deterred, um, I think the fine that's associated with violating the law becomes even a, a greater reminder and, and maybe the recidivism is lower. But sometimes uh, the, be the, the beginning of the whole ability to create deterrence is trying to create uh, evidence that can be used to dissuade others from getting in the same kind of trouble. I think it's very valuable. I think it's very important. Um, and. The 38 percent reduction in violations that we literally experienced in the years that I mentioned in Dallas County Schools cannot be discounted. Don't, we'll never know what might have happened if those 38 percent of violations had been allowed to occur. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned, I think, both still shots and video it sounded like the camera on the reverse actually was a video. So. You're, you're doing streaming video? Actually, it's all video, but we can create still images uh, from okay. the video. But it, uh, interior and exterior is, is actually okay. all video. And so you talked about you get the information through LTE. Mm -hmm. So my presumption is you are streaming video as the, the bus is, is driving. You're collecting it on your end? We collect it on the bus. Okay. So it's stored on the bus? On the bus. Okay. And so you, you have people that come in pick up however, whatever your storage media is, and then you take it back to wherever your processing center is, and that's when you review it? No, we don't. Um, we don't ever review the interior video. 
which is a very <coughs> sensitive issue, and that video belongs to the schools. That's video that contains images of children. Uh, the schools, though, in our experience, do have reasons for wanting occasionally to get uh, portions of that video to try and understand what happened. In our system, you don't have to physically go to the bus to pull the hard drive. You can literally say, okay, I have a reported incident on bus 461 between 12 o'clock noon and 12.35 on a particular day. And uh, within about an hour, we have that video collected. It, it's all done in the cloud. And a link, a secure link sent to the requester who's authorized by the schools. That's all an internal policy issue as to who will be authorized. Um, that information. So there is no physical handling of, of the video. There are incidents where the police need best evidence, and in that case we have a policy on evidence management and we will go out and actually pull the hard drive to release it as evidence to the police department. Okay. So, so um, the school takes possession of that data, which means that the school is responsible for any Freedom of Information Act. It doesn't go through your company. It doesn't go through our company at all. Um, but I should mention that the video is rewritten about every 30 days if there hasn't been a reported incident and therefore a cause to download some, some part of it. Uh, presuming no calls on the video, that is the interior video, it would just rewrite. And the same is true of the exterior video, except that when our processors see a stop arm event with a car passing, then all, all seven camera views are pulled over the cellular network and they're, they're brought back to our processing station. Okay. So when you have the cameras on the buses, mm -hmm. and some of our bus stops are right next to homes mm -hmm. and yards, is the field of regard of the camera um, only on the street, or will it pick up what's going on in, in private property? You no. Know, one of the reasons we're able to use cellular technology is that our cameras are designed in such a way that they're focused on the license plate location on vehicles. Okay. If we picked up a lot of area clutter, unfortunately, we, it would be too large a file to be able to really push over cellular. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Um, I have one question yes. on the um, maintenance of these. You said a local team would come in. What constitutes a local team? And how long does that sort of thing take? My expectation is that we would be addressing failures daily. I mean, if they happen, they would be addressed that day. Um, we, we are building our eastern presence. I already have identified a service manager for the east uh, region, and uh, he is working on um, finding people who can be service techs. Uh, but, but we'll do that immediately. Before we're up and running, we'll have them here locally. We, we have many other contracts we anticipate being able to pull together here in this area in the next month or two. So we'll have a larger footprint, and, and I, <laughs> At our office will be in Lorton. I live in Springfield, have uh, most of my, my, my later years. And uh, so we're, we're, we're invested in this community. Okay. Um, you're not a technician then? I'm not a technician. Okay. No. I figure you're in Springfield. If something goes down, we can get you out here rather quickly. <laughs> oh, you'll get us here quickly, but, okay. but probably won't be me turning okay. the wrench. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else? Anyone? I have a. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Sebesky, that the School Board of the City of Manassas approve the recommendation to award Force Multiplier Solutions, Inc. for the bus stop arm camera and enforcement system. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carrie, six. I'm going to abstain. Um, I, I know okay. we can't get certain information here, and I have some significant security concerns when it comes to the data. Okay. Okay, uh, it carries 5-0 with one abstention. Thank you very much, sir. Thank we you appreciate it, Mr. Knox. Um, I missed one thing. Uh, last meeting is a part of our action agenda. Uh, the school board approved the appointment of Ms. Amanda w Wagner as associate principal for Baldwin Intermediate School. We would like to recognize her here tonight. Ms. Wagner. Good evening, Chairman DeMaria, members of the board. I am elated to be standing here before you this evening as the Associate Principal of Baldwin Intermediate and Pre-K Coordinator. 
I have lived and worked in the city of Manassas over the last nearly 10 years and throughout this time have been afforded various opportunities uh, that have all led me here today. Um, from my work as a classroom educator, literacy coach, central office administration, and my work with the foundation, I have been able to work with and build incredible relationships with our outstanding students, staff, family members, and the broader community. And I could not be more proud to be a member of and an employee of such an outstanding community and school division. But I didn't come here this evening to share with you my pride in Manassas City or how excited I am to be afforded this opportunity. Um, I also came here to share with you my commitment. And I sincerely look forward to the road ahead because I feel confident and can assure you that I will do everything within my power to continue to enhance this outstanding school division and the quality education that we provide our students. And I will commit myself daily to ensuring that I fully support our staff, our students, our families, and our community. And it is my hope that through this effort, I will be able to make all of them as proud as they have made me. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Um, we're very proud to have you. And don't ever apologize for being proud and excited to be in the city, <laughs> Manassas City Schools and the city of Manassas, because that's what we're all about. So thank you very much. We appreciate it, and we look forward to you getting students in a year or so. <laughs> As do I. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Wegg, thank you also for having the pride to live in this city. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate that. I think we all do. <laughs> um, and I believe that completes our action agenda, and we will move to a closed session if I can get a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas enter closed session pursuant to exemption from open meetings as allowed by section 2.23711, part A, paragraph one of the Code of Virginia 1950, as amended for the following purpose. Discussion of personnel matters PERS 1516-3038 and, and PERS 1516-3044. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mrs. Besky. That the school board of the city of Manassas enter closed sessions pursuant to exemptions from open meetings allowed by section 2.2-3711, part A, paragraph one of the Code of Virginia 1950 is amended for the following purposes. Discussion of personnel matters, PER S1516-3038 and PER S1516-3044. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries 6-0. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it very much. Thank you for coming.